Okay, gang. So actually, I want to do this example and one more because I want to make sure that whenever you're doing an SM1 problem, you feel extremely confident on how to handle situations where stereochemistry does matter. Okay. So in this is well, this one's a little bit simpler, and then we'll jump to one that's a that I think is a little bit more involved. Okay. So in this problem right here, I hope you know, given what we've done so far, the thoughts you're having are, okay. I see over the arrow, I kind of have one thing, and even if it looked like this, some teachers would like to, you know, put both, both, uh, you know, a conjugate acid and its conjugate base up there, but what we're seeing is we have uh, acetic acid over the arrow, and if we look, you know, drill into its structure, we see this right here. We see an OH, we see this thing acting as our solvent as well as potentially our nucleophile, but over the air, we, we can you know uh, come to the conclusion we are in a polar protic environment, right? So polar protic solvent. We're thinking SN1, and furthermore, to you know support that conclusion, we are. If we look at our substrate, yes, we have a good leaving group, and that good leaving group is attached to a secondary uh, carbo carbon. So that definitely would support you know carbocation formation. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of draw the mechanism like down here and get to our product up here, over here, we'll see where we end up. Okay, so since we've kind of determined this is an SN1 situation, our very first step in drawing the mechanism is solvolysis, right? Leaving group is gonna leave because this polar protic solvent is gonna leave, uh, you know, help the leaving group wean off and just bounce, right? So we'll show that leaving. So down here, we have I'll move out of the way. Leaving group leaves, we have solvolysis, and then we have the resulting carbocation, right? But remember, whenever we do solvolysis in SN1 problems, we have to freeze because we need to think to ourselves, we just made a carbocation. Nature likes stability. Nature will do things to get more stable, right? Because we just now have, you know, we have a, uh, an atom that doesn't have a full octet, right? We're unstable. Can we improve this carbocation either through a methyl shift or a carbocation shift? And the answer is we absolutely can do it through a, a hydride shift, right? Because if we look to our two neighbors directly down and directly up, we think to ourselves, well, you know, I'm not going to do a move here to go from secondary to secondary. That doesn't make any sense. However, I do have the ability to do secondary to tertiary and we definitely know from our carbocation stability knowledge that tertiary carbocations are definitely more stable than secondary. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this hydrogen in. And remember to do to show a hydride shift, we're actually going to draw an arrow from the electrons. I'm going to move this charge. From the electrons, we're moving, bonding to the hydrogen, right there. So this literally illustrates the physical move of this H and the two electrons in this bond right here. I'll even asterisk this H right here. So that when we redraw the structure, I can show the asterisk right there. And our charge is going to move from here to here. Now we have to be careful because the moment we do that, and the moment we make this carbon a carbocation, we go from being sp3 hybridized to sp2. And remember, sp2 carbons are flat, trigonal planar. So they never have wedges and dashes shown on them. So that wedge methyl group becomes a straight line. That's why we're gonna do two examples because that's a little weird sometimes to remember to do. So the point being is we did a hydride shift here. Hydride shift. We've improved our carbocation. We can't make it any more stable. So now we're actually ready to do our attack and continue on with the problem. So enter in our nucleophile, who's not normally a good nucleophile, right? Because he's not negatively charged. Pretty bad uh, nucleophile to go in and attack something negative. However, our substrate, right, is craving a bond. This carbon is starved of electrons, a full octet. So that makes this acetic acid good enough in this circumstance. And remember, we're going to attack from this oxygen right here. So I'll go ahead and show the oxygen right there coming in for the attack. And now, remember, because this carbon is sp2 hybridized, because it is trigonal planar and flat, 
there is no preference for this acetic acid to come from on top or from underneath, right? So it happens in equal amounts, right? That's why SM1 produces racemic mixtures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just pick. I'm just gonna say that this acetic acid is gonna come in from on top and bond as a wedge, therefore forcing this methyl group to go flip down to be a dash. So I'll show my oxygen right here. That hydrogen did not go anywhere. And there's no wrong way to draw it, just more like how you're gonna lay things out. There's my acetic acid. I'm gonna draw my methyl group right here, which is a dash now, because it had to be forced down. And I don't have to redraw this hydrogen, but it is still attached here. Our oxygen, because he's now sharing a lone pair, has a positive charge. So at this point, what I'm gonna do, and this would have to be included in your final answer, just know that at this step, we do have the enantiomer, right? So we get 50% of this, as well as 50% of what I'm about to draw down below. These happen in equal amounts. But I'm gonna go ahead and carry this one forward, right here. And the only thing we really have to do is I'm gonna use this bromine kind of as our cleanup guy. In reality, it could be pretty much anything. Oxygen doesn't love that positive charge, so we're just gonna go ahead and deprotonate him and give him these electrons. So our final answer looks like this. Oxygen. So this is our final answer. But remember, this is actually just 50% of our final answer. But you don't have to, you have the choice of drawing this and the actual second product, or, which is down here, I can, I can draw right here for us. Remember, the other product is just gonna be if the acetic acid attacks from the underside, not the top. But what I like to do is instead of drawing this, I will draw one, and then right underneath my answer, I write plus enantiomer, which is an absolutely acceptable thing to do on a test. Okay, so a lot was going on here, right? We had the leaving group leave, we made a carbon cation. We had to freeze and stop because we had to think to ourselves, um, can we make this carbon cation better? The answer was yes, because we could go from secondary to tertiary via a hydride shift, right? We moved that hydrogen next door, made a carbocation on the tertiary carbon, and we had to be careful because, right, we had perspective drawn before, but since all the lines attached to this carbon are flat, not drawn with wedges and dashes, we had to make sure we drew that because had we drawn this thing right here, you're gonna lose some points. So don't do that. Make sure that if you have a plus charge on something, draw all your lines flat, just straight like this. So then, once we improved the carbocation, we attacked. And remember, we kind of went on one way where we just showed one of the two enantiomers in the racemic mixture, but we recognized, okay, we're gonna attack from the top. It's our choice to choose on top, which forced our methyl group down. That put a positive charge on our oxygen. We had to do a cleanup step, right? And remember at the very end, once we got our final answer, we had to flex our knowledge that we knew that attack happened on top and on bottom in equal amounts. So we had 50% of this plus the enantiomer. Okay, let's do one more and then call it a video. Okay, gang, I know this video is a little bit on the longer side, but please stick with me. I think this last example will really give you uh, another like good exposure to a trickier SN1 problem. Okay, so in this problem right here, I hope when you kind of look at this and are starting to digest it, we look over the arrow. We see that we have just been given methanol, right? We see that this, Thing over the arrow, it's not straight up negative, right? So it's not, probably not a good nucleophile, right? It's, it's neutral, it's not great. It's basically water, right? It's basically water, except this H is a methyl. So not a spectacular nucleophile. However, we know that it has polar protic character because of this right here. So it's looking like SN1, as long as our substrate can support a carbocation to be formed, right? And lucky us, because if we look right here, we see that 
This is a secondary carbon. We have an OTS, we have an autosylate leaving group, very stable. So secondary carbocation, definitely good to go. Polar protic solvent, good leaving group. Let's do SN1. Okay, so first thing, right? Solvolysis, leaving group leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of loop this around right here. Kind of go this way. So once we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my initial carbocation. Initial carbocation. Ethyl. Methyl, and then carbocation right here. Okay, great. But remember, this is where we freeze, and we think to ourselves, can we make this carbocation better via a shift? Now, if we look to our right, right, we're secondary here, we're secondary there. No room for improvement right there, right? We want to move our carbocation to a new location that is more substituted. The more neighbors we have, the better we are. And if we look to this other side, right, our first thought might be like, damn, we don't have any uh, hydrogens to move around. However, if we look at this carbon, one, two, three, four, he is a quaternary carbon. One of those bonds to that on that carbon is to a methyl group. And remember, we can shift methyl groups just like we can shift hyd uh, hydrogens, right? So we are not going to do a hydride shift. We're going to do a methyl shift. So if we take this here and literally move arrow goes starts at the middle of the bond we're literally illustrating the whole pick up and move process of this methyl group to go from here to there so let's you know move and draw There's the methyl group we moved, and now our charge is right here. Excellent. Okay, so at this point in time, we've improved our carbocation the best it's going to be. Went from secondary to now tertiary. Now we can bring in our methanol, and we can do attack. We're going to attack with the oxygen. He has the electrons. He's calling the shots. We'll go ahead and attack right here, and remember... At this point in time, there's no preference as to whether this carbon right here, an sp2 carbon, trigonal planar, flat, there's no preference as to whether we're gonna attack on top or whoop, go on on bottom, right? Happens in a 50-50 split. So for the sake of your mechanism, just pick one, finish out the problem, and just remember to slap a little plus enantiomer on your final answer, you'll get all the points. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and, you know what we did on top this time, let's try on bottom. So I'll say that my oxygen here is gonna come from underneath. That will force my ethyl to be a wedge and I'll attach as a dash. So let's, I'm not gonna get myself in a room, let me just do a bad erase job with my hand. So let's, up top, I'm gonna to attach my ethyl as a, a dash. And I'm actually going to draw the rest of the structure. No reason why I'm doing it in this order. Oh, I actually said I was going to do the opposite. Let me attach my ethyl as a wedge. And I'm going to attach my oxygen as a dash. And I have a plus charge. Right? And what I was drawing was, well, the other thing I was drawing was valid. But I just wanted to show you guys the other, the other way. Okay, so remember, now that we've attacked, we definitely have everyone connected in the right spot. However, we have to do some cleanup because oxygen does not love that positive charge, right? He's electronegative. He's all about the electrons. So we're going to do a little deprotonation step to get him back to neutral. And you can use anything. You could use another methanol. And actually, let's do that this time. But you could have also very much used this OTS to come back as well. Take the H, give oxygen the electrons. So final arrow up. So I got my ethyl as a wedge. I have my OME as a dash. The rest of my structure gets filled in. And remember, I'm not done yet. 
Hope you were sitting at your computer going, oh, Joe, you're going to forget. We have to write plus enantiomer. And if you want to be super duper uber flashy, you can slap a, like a little 50%, 50% on here. Hands up because you proved the haters wrong and got the problem right. Okay. So I hope this makes sense with SN1. You just need to remember that you're always looking for a polar, polar product solvent, something that's gonna double as a solvent in the nucleophile. You have to form your carbocation and then you have to be wary of hydride and methyl shifts, remember? And when you do that, when you shift, if something gets becomes a carbocation and it had perspective, whether that be a wedge or a dash, remember to draw it as a straight line. Uh, remember when you attack, if you're attacking something and that center right here is then attached to four different things, you're producing a stereo center, remember. So you have to either pick, you know, you have to give one thing, make one thing a wedge, one thing a dash, carry out it out through the problem. But to prove to someone that you know what you're talking about, you gotta remember to say, I know this happens in equal amounts. I know there's no preference whether it's on top or on bottom. So you gotta draw this, draw the other product as well, or you just draw one and then plus an antiumer, call it a day. Okay, gang, so we got E1 left, then some examples of picking between all four different reactions, so keep chugging along with me in this section, and uh, we'll get it done.